Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele and today is July 13th, 2022 and in this video I want to talk to you about trend line cycles. In this video I'm going to be using International Business Machine Corporation, also known as IBM, as the example market. So we all know what a trend line is, right? Let's give an example right here. We'll use this big low right here and I'll put the trend line right there. So we go from a low to a low in this example. And this is in theory a trend line. So conceptually a trend line we would assume that because a low touched here and a low touched here that we might get the market to make a low on this line again and then bounce off of it. In this particular case we did not get that. We created a trend line from this low to this low, and then the market said, oh, I don't see a line there, and just kept going. But that's not how we want to use the trend line. We don't actually care if the market respects it or not, which makes it more interesting. If we measure from this top right here to this top right here, we have this trend line right here, and we see that the market moved down just a little bit, came right back up and touched it again, and then over here, it actually was respected and then the market moved down. So this is kind of the traditional idea of a trend line, right? We expect the market, we hope that the market uses it for support or in this case resistance. But what I'm going to show you here is using the trend line to create some cycles, possible cycle or cyclical action in the market. So we're going to go back to this trend line that failed and I'm just going to measure with this trend line. I'm going to measure the market based on this trend line. Let me put it on the exact low. There we go. And then double it and see what happens. So you might initially think that we're going to measure these two points right here, in which case they are 39 bars or 59 days. And we're going to use bar counts in this particular method. So we would go doubling that. We would go 39 bars into the future but we don't really get a significant top or bottom there we do get a slight change in trend from a move up to a sideways move there but let's be honest we're measuring from pretty significant lows right here so we would anticipate that the reaction would be a little bit more impressive well instead of this what i'm going to do i'm going to measure from the last point i used to create the trend line which in this case is this low and then i'm going to measure how long it takes from this last low for the market to touch the trend line again and i don't care if it bounces off of it or goes through that's not important to me i just want to know how long it is between here and here so that's what i'm going to measure and I measure from here to here and we get 17 bars and then I just double that distance right here and 14 15 16 17 right here we see is the low and then the market moves and it changes direction from going down to an uptrend and we get a significant move so now let's go ahead and look at that second trend line that I drew from these two tops right here because this gives us a little bit of a different situation here. Now you might initially think well I drew from this line to this line so it's one two three candles till it touches again but this is so close to here relative to the amount of time from here to here that we're just going to consider this right here the final touch. So in other words, we can really think of it being measured like this, from this top to this top right here, because this is so close together. So we're measuring from here all the way to here where the market touched the trend line again. So from here to here, that's 34 bars, and doubling that would obviously be 68. And if we move 68 into the future, there we go, 68 bars we get we're moving up right here and we get a change in trend and it only moves down for three days afterwards but the amount of price movement was very significant so this swing that we timed with this right here doubling from here to here is a short duration swing but a large price move swing so in other words a very nice trade 
Now there's some other things to keep in mind here, like you can draw trend lines that are just never ever going to hit anything. For instance, if I go from this low right here to this low right here, this trend line is going down so significantly that I doubt that the market would ever hit that. That kind of trend line is not going to do you any good right there. So you just want to find stuff that is let's try right here we have a low here and we move to this low right here and then we see we were retouched right there the trend line was retouched so from here to here is seven bars so we double that and we get 14 bars 12 13 14. so we would anticipate the market to start moving down here but it doesn't does it no this is a situation where we actually have a breakout point above this right here at this point right here we get a consolidation that happens but then we continue to move upwards so you can consider it a failure but it's not actually because it's it's timing a breakout and that's one thing you have to keep in mind is that when you're forecasting the future with anything cyclical in nature you aren't just going to get tops and bottoms. You're also going to find you get breakout points. So that's one of the reasons why these methods, these timing methods or cyclical um, forecasting methods, I guess I should call them, they can be a little bit tricky because it's not an A or B situation. In other words, if it's moving up, then it's going to move down. Or if the market's moving down, then it's going to move up. It can also be a breakout. But anyway, this is another methodology to use to anticipate changes in trends in the market or breakouts. And I'm not going to give you any more examples because it's not a very complex method. So... I will talk to you next week in next week's video.